My special guests today are preparing to enter full-time cross-cultural mission work in a nation that has a population of 126 million people in an area of 378,000 kilometres. That's about 15% of the area of Western Australia. And only about 1% of the population identify as Christian. Jason and Cindy Yao, along with your son Nathan today, welcome to Perth Keswick Convention. How long have you guys been married and how many kids do you have? Well, thank you, Peter, for having us. So we have been together for 15 years and married for 11 years. And we have three children, Nathan, 18 months, Caleb, three and a half, and Audrey, five and a half. Why would you feel called to go and serve the Lord in the nation of Japan? We feel called to Japan because we, we know that God has a heart for mission and, and we, we love Jesus and, and we want to be part of that mission. And so we want to be in his mission where God is trying to reach uh, a people that are, you know, that haven't heard of Jesus and, and the Japanese people group. They're basically the largest unreached people group in the world and, and we want to share God's love with them. And only 1% identify as Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why do you think there's a resistance to the gospel in Japan? If you see so much need, why the resistance? So part of it is because of how they identify as Japanese. So to be Japanese is to be Shinto or Buddhist. And it also means that, you know, as that you would engage in all these different uh, religious and cultural traditions. And to be Christian means that you, you can't engage in all of them. And, and you would upset um, you know, the family dynamic and the, and the peace and harmony that they value a lot. And so to, to really try and understand it for us, it's like saying, as an Australian, if you become a Christian, you can't celebrate Australia Day. And so that's a challenge that they face. But we feel that God is preparing the hearts of Japanese to accept him. That's wonderful. So you did a short-term mission trip there to Japan and you've been doing some research on the culture, as is obvious from your response there. You'll obviously have to be learning language as well. Big challenge for you? Yes, yes. So we both don't speak Japanese and he knows a little bit of Chinese, but I don't know any. Um, so yeah, we will have to learn the language and understand the culture when we go there. And it's, com it's compulsory, it's part of OMF's training as well, that we really get a good understanding of the language. And language is so important because you see Nathan here, he doesn't speak. It's very hard to understand him um, when he wants something. He might make noise or point, but without language, you cannot build meaningful relationship um, or friendships. Oh, yeah. So language is so important to really be able to evangelize and reach out, to then also understand the culture and be able to bring the gospel in a way that the Japanese can understand. Now, I understand, Cindy, that you've had a heart for overseas missions since childhood. Mm -hmm. It's not something the average Aussie kid thinks very much about, but you were in Mauritius. Mm -hmm. Why was missions on your radar so early in life? Well, I have a very interesting story about that. So I need to start with a man named Percy King. Percy King was an Australian missionary who served with OMF Australia. Now he felt called by God to reach out to the Chinese people. He went to China and then went to Malaysia and God called him to Mauritius. So he went to Mauritius, in, he must have been in his 60s, 70s, and started reaching out to the Chinese people there. And that's how my parents became Christian. Wow. They became Christian as young adults. They attended the church that pa Percy King planted, and I grew up in that church. So a church planted by a missionary was also very missional itself. So the church sent out a few missionaries, and it was one of those missionaries who returned back, and she challenged the, the young people. She said, dedicate one year of your life after high school to missions because there are places who do not know about Jesus, who have not heard the gospel. And so the seed was planted from a young age because of how the church operated and worked. And thanks to the obedience of Percy King, I could see the legacy of what a missionary did and the legacy of his work in my life. And that's bearing fruit now. Yep. <laughs> Jason, what about you? When did you first feel that God might be calling you to serve cross-culturally? So you heard sort of Cindy's story and the way I come in is that when, when we were friends and we were starting to, starting to date, she says to me, um, I have a heart for mission and my future husband would also need to have a heart for mission. And so I, I opened my heart and just you know, to see how God was leading me. Uh, after we got married, we took a course called Kairos course where we learned more about mission. And yeah, we learned that, you know, God has a plan. He has a mission. We want to be part of it and... We, we wanted to be 
uh, involved in it. And that's where the seed was planted for me. Wonderful. Um, now, Cindy, you are a mum with kids. Do you think that might open some doors for you for sharing the gospel with some mums in Japan? Absolutely. I think little kids and children are just a key to so many communities, mom groups, schools, play groups, where they break down barriers. You know, who can resist a young child or baby? And yeah, we really see them as a, a great way to reach out to other people and do life together. Great. Now, you'll be... Primarily, you'll be studying Japanese when you go there, and you'll be studying and working with a team from Overseas Mission Fellowship, or OMF, in Japan. Are they going to pay you a big salary? <laughs> so we're, we're, we're volunteers, and we're funded by the generosity of churches and individuals who want to partner with us to send us. And so like the founder of, uh, of OMF, Hudson Taylor, he famously said, you know, God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. And so we just believe that, you know, if God wants us there, he will send us and provide what we need. That's, that's wonderful. So obviously, not only f you, do you need some finances for people to come behind you and support you in finance, but you'd appreciate people praying for you as well. Absolutely. And prayer is everything, right? Prayer is the work of, of missions. So we really so appreciate people praying for our family, people praying for Japan, the nation of Japan, um, for the missionaries and Christians there. Um, yes, we are so grateful for people praying for us. And if you want to get in touch, we will have our prayer cards at the OMF booth where there's our, I'll put a link to our email. You can sign up for our newsletter. We love connecting with people and whoever wants to follow on with our news and our journey, feel free to do so, yeah. Jason and Cindy, thank you for sharing your heart with us today. I wish you God's blessing and every success in your mission ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter.